Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So at this point, it's been a solid month of the drama surrounding the release of the Hogwarts Legacy game and anything related to it. And this latest chapter of drama, of course, involves Pikami's graduation that took place earlier this week. And in the only two days since that initial graduation announcement, I returned today with a whole host of updates regarding that situation. If you want the full details about the initial reaction to her graduation, you can check out my previous video listed in the description. But the drama that has stemmed from that announcement has only spiraled even more out of control over the past two days. Twitter is normally a cesspool, but things have gone completely nuclear as millions of users have weighed in on Pikami's graduation and the role the harassment campaign played towards it. With these updates, I hope that not only will you get a better sense of the lunacy taking place on Twitter currently, but also you will be more informed so you can decide for yourself how to view this situation as a whole. So first, we're going to look at the reactions to Pikami's graduation from her friends and peers within the VTuber community, reactions that'll shine some light on the reasons for her graduation and what role the harassment might have played. And then we're going to look at the war zone that is Twitter currently and some of the continued harassment campaigns going on there. We'll also look at some of the cringe-inducing coverage some mainstream outlets have provided for this situation. And then we'll end with the most recent messages shared by Pikami and what all this means moving forward. So lots of ground to cover today, but before we get into that, I'm going to play a quick clip from my previous video that sums up the events leading to her graduation announcement. If you've seen it already, feel free to skip forward about a minute to the next timestamp. One thing to keep in mind is that Pikami had been on a hiatus from streaming for roughly a month now, and on February 6th, Pikami expressed her intentions to return to content creation by streaming Hogwarts Legacy the following day on YouTube. However, those plans would quickly change after Pikami was harassed by Twitter users who were calling her a transphobe, among other hateful rhetoric, for simply wanting to stream this game. Where Pikami would then cancel the stream and share that she was just a kettle who wanted to play games and meant no harm, those tweets, accompanied by her goodnight tweet shortly after, were followed by a three-week-long inactivity on social media. So obviously you guys know how this ended with earlier this week Vom's project announcing that Pikami will be graduating at the end of March and that on March 31st she'll be shutting down her VTuber related activities and the related channels will be either closing or going private. So it comes with zero surprise that this announcement came with an explosion of reaction on social media. All across the spectrum, people completely upset and frustrated by this announcement. People trying to look fondly upon Pikami and all the great memories she's had with them. And of course, some more toxic people celebrating it as some sort of a win. You even had people like this posting crazy responses to this whole situation. But I wanted to point this out real quick. I thought it was funny. Some of the people angry about this tweet I made were pointing out like, Come on, Rev, it's just a drawing. Get over it. Like, leave it to aunties to not understand the fact that there is a human being behind this character. And when you're harassing this character, you're harassing the person who is playing Pikami. There is a real person being hurt. So, like, leave it to aunties to not understand the difference between reality and fiction. But I thought that was worth noting. So, in the aftermath of the graduation announcement, the biggest question that was going around on Twitter was... What role did the harassment campaign play in her graduation announcement? So I want to make this very clear from the jump. If there's any Twitter freaks watching this video, listen up. Like bring it in close, read what I'm saying very closely. Whether or not the harassment played a big role in her graduation, a small role, or no role at all, that does not excuse the harassment she received for wanting to stream this game. Okay, is that clear? The harassment is not okay. The people who were bullying her are not absolved of guilt just because she might have been graduating anyways before all this harassment took place. I can't make that any more clear. The people who were bullies are still bad people, whether or not it played a decisive role in her graduation. 
And before we look at some clips from fellow peers and people from the VTuber community that are going to help explain maybe the role that this harassment played in a graduation, here's my stance. It's pretty much the same as my last video. I believe that there is a very good chance that she was planning on graduating. It was definitely a serious thought. And when the Hogwarts legacy harassment happened, it just sped up the process. That's my belief. Again, we're speculating, but based on circumstances, it seems like that is the most likely thing that happened. So on Twitter currently, there are two clips going around that people are treating as the smoking gun that Pikami and her graduation was not affected by the harassment. Now, this first one is going to be a clip from Pamu, who is from Niji Sanji. She is a friend of Pikami, and she spoke on stream yesterday about this situation where she shared how the graduation was already set in motion a while ago. I did know in advance about this, but um, because she did message me um, a while ago before she went on her break and she said she was like I wanted to tell you beforehand so you know I felt I don't I don't know grateful I guess that she considered me in telling about it so early so like I said people are pointing at this as the smoking gun and I don't really think it proves that much if I'm being honest so yes it does hint that Pikami was at least thinking about graduating a while ago. Now, the fair question to ask is, well, what is a while ago? Was that a month ago, two months ago, three months ago? We don't really know. And also, you know, how serious were these discussions? It's a fair question to ask because you, if you're a content creator and you have friends in this space, like everyone at some point has kind of a breakdown where they're like, you know what, I'm just packing it in. I'm tired of all this stuff, especially someone who's getting harassed a lot. You go, you know what, I'm tired of this. It's stressful. I'm thinking about moving on. It happens all the time. It doesn't mean it's an official announcement or anything like that. It might just be confiding in a friend. But also, there is a very likely chance that this was a graduation in motion, in motion already. But these are fair questions to ask, right? So, I think when, uh, in terms of clips proving that Pikami was already in motion with the graduation, there is actually a clip from a rep at VOMS Project. One of the people actually helped write the graduation post. They recently streamed their reaction and covered some of the details of this letter you're looking at now on the screen. And I think it's worth taking a look because once again, people are claiming this is another smoking gun that the graduation had nothing to do with the harassment. But I think it just proves some other things that these users don't want to admit. ま、かなり長い間、あの、共有を重ねていまして、卒業することちょっと<笑> So in the clip, they say that they've been in discussions with Pikami for a while, and the fact that she was going to graduate was something decided a long time ago. Once again, what is a long time ago? But again, whether or not the graduation was planned in advance, that doesn't mean the harassment did not affect the timing or speed of the announcement. After all, that sense of urgency, they keep using the terms um, sudden announcement, sudden changes, and that to me, gives me the impression unless they misspoke that there was a turn of events they didn't expect in this case yes maybe the graduation was already in motion but the harassment sped things up and it just seems like it's reflected by the details involving the pop-up store where they seem like they're scrambling to try to include Pikami in this setup that's coming in the following days 
So I don't think we're ever going to get a full answer to these questions. And there is another clip that I feel like it's not getting as much attention for some reason. Maybe it doesn't fit certain narratives, but I think it's really important to listen to Kason's reaction because Kason and Pikami are very close friends and they had many different public memories when they were interacting when Kason was still Coco at Hall Live. They have many classic streams together, many classic collabs. And her reflection of what happened to Pikami, I think, is really important. <laughs> Friends forever. あの、関係ない場所を作りたい人たちが作った場所なんですよ。それを理解してない人が、まあ、騒ぎたい人にとっては関係ないそうですね。うん、なんだけども、悪質なのが、なんか理解理解できる攻撃対象にしかしない。So as you could see in that clip, there is a heavy emphasis on unreasonable people and unreasonable things people are doing. Which is clearly a poke at harassment. That's the way of her describing harassment that Pikami is receiving. And with the statements from my previous video, it seems like that might have sped up things with her graduation. And again, with Kason's clip, it seems like the graduation was already in motion. But that emphasis on harassment is really important. It's not like Pikami has been without harassment for her entire career. There's actually been some leaked members only uh, community posts from YouTube. And I don't know if this is technically leaked or whatever, how you want to describe it. But basically there's posts out there claiming, I might not be able to show it. I'm gonna have to think about it. But um, there's posts saying that Pikami had previously posted in her community tab for members only that she had been harassed on different occasions and that she was upset over it. So clearly these things can get to her. And after all, she is human, that is normal. And just basing off of that, it seems logical that the latest harassment campaign might have affected her and affected the speed of the graduation. And there's one more clip I want to share involving other VTubers. It's a Shy Lily clip. Um, once again, talking about the harassment. She's had some very good takes on this whole set of Hogwarts legacy drama. So I thought just one more to play for today. And I, I think it, it sums up a lot of thoughts like mine pretty well. Pika, oh man, I was texting some yesterday with Pika me. I was so sad. Yeah, poor Pika me. Dude, she's been nothing but a female beacon. And for Twitter and used to get rid of her like that is fucked up. What happened to Pika me? Twitter frogs. She announced that she wanted, intended to play the wizard game. And obviously because she is now a female degen that spends all that time breathing and living Twitter, she had no idea that some person that's somehow connected to things has some shit opinions about some great people, and they were tearing her apart for simply announcing that she wants to play a wizard game. So as we close out these video reactions, I want to play one more person, and it's Asmongold. It is very surreal seeing Asmongold talk so much about VTubers. Like, I feel like we're, leaving, we're living in a very weird timeline right now. And he has weighed in on both the Silver Veil and the Pikami situation. And for someone who I believe when he first encountered VTubers a couple years ago, I thought his takes about VTubers were absolutely terrible. Some of the worst takes you'll ever hear. But it seems like because he's been so supportive with these related situations that you know what, maybe he is coming around with these things and let's just get his reaction to the peak of me harassment and graduation as well as his thoughts on Kason. Uh, Amano pick me, a VTuber massively harassed for announcing to play. Hogwarts Legacy for nostalgia purposes announced her retirement on March 31st. Again, she didn't even play the game. She just said that she wanted to play the game. Oh, this is it. This is her video. 
本当にたくさんの応援ありがとうございました。Fuck. 短い時間ではありますが、like、以上となりますが、Maybe. ありがとうございました。It's sad to see somebody that just leaves the internet and stops making content, especially if it's because of like harassment or something like that. Because the worst thing about it is that every single time that people can get somebody to quit or successfully bully them out of their platform, then it gives them a reward structure around doing it again. For me, my, my school days for me was hell. This one is so hot. Oh my god. Yeah, like I said, it's a very bizarre timeline we're living in. It's crazy to see people like Hero Hey in the background of his, his screen and seeing some of my like, Twitter mutuals being talked about in his videos and streams. It's, it's a weird timeline, but I, I'm embracing it. But Asmin Gold has a great attitude to deal with hate surrounding this game and Twitter in general, and that's just to block and ignore people. It's very good advice. It's not the easiest thing. Like, right, it's hard to see hateful comments directed your way, but you know, at the end of the day, who cares what random Twitter Spurg number 10 million has to say about you? You don't know them. You don't owe them anything. They were never going to support you, so screw them. Just ignore them and get rid of them. And there's one more thing I want to point out before we look at Twitter's reaction to all this, and this has to do with Pikami's likes. Now, some users have pointed out that these now removed likes from Pikami's Twitter account. Show that she is aware of the harassment and she was supporting posts that were denouncing the harassment. Like I said, they have been since removed, but I've seen video recordings of her likes. I've seen enough proof to say that this is not、uh, photoshopped or anything like that. And she probably got rid of those to avoid any further controversy in there. But clearly, she is paying attention to the people calling out the harassment. And also, it's proof that. The harassment happened. I can't believe that is a controversial or brave thing to say when there's so much evidence out there to show that she was being harassed and is still being harassed by Twitter users. So, quite predictably, the reaction on Twitter has remained very toxic, and I don't need to go through a million new tweets for you guys to get that point. It's pretty obvious at this time, but I just want to go through a few tweets and events that I thought were interesting from the past 24 hours. You have tweets like this. This is a very popular like, gaslighting campaign where these people are calling out other people for being transphobic and essentially writing the offensive comments for them. Like, their imagination is just on the same level as the transphobes. So they say, oh no, guys, they're going to reply to our tweets with 41% and rotoscope wojacks, even more than they already do. Whatever will we do? This whole Pikami stuff is both very pathetic and funny to watch. So, first of all, I don't understand. Are you saying the harassment against Pikami is funny? Like, is, is, is that what you're trying to say? That's not a very good look. But, like, these whole things, like 41% referring to gay men rates in the trans community, like, where did you get that from any of this? Where did you get any of that? Like, I, I've seen more people combating transphobia by saying transphobic things for the transphobes, the alleged transphobes. Than the actual transphobia. It's weird. Like people just parroting their own, I guess, projection in this, in this situation. And it's very strange to see. I don't really know how much more you can inject yourself into this drama till you start realizing, man, maybe I'm making a, a bigger issue out of some of these things than I am. Like go out and fight the actual transphobes than making up statements for people. Like you don't have to go that far. Now, I have to look at an archive version of this tweet. It has since been removed, but it was very popular, just showing the kind of gaslighting people are doing. People are assuming now that Pikami is the transphobe, not only just for playing the game, but also it's just her attitude. So, like this meme showing obviously it's supposed to be Pikami, VTubing, terms of service, you will not be transphobic. I agree. And then they say, Transphobic stuff, and then they're banned for transphobia. And that's supposed to be like an own on Pikami, who's like the sweetest person and has never had any sort of transphobic views on anything at any point. And yet, these Twitter users feel comfortable making memes that imply such. But this is the thing I really want to talk about. So, on the second, the day after the graduation, the VTuber Pipkin Pippa announced that she will be streaming. Hogwarts Legacy on YouTube. As you can see, nearly 36,000 likes on this tweet promoting her stream. 
That is insane. And you can see by the number of quote retweets, people are quite mad. Of course, there was a good number of them saying how based this decision was, but a lot of outrage, similar things that were used to attack Silvervale and Pikami calling her a transpho for playing this game. And it's funny because just like me, like she doesn't even like Harry Potter. I don't even care for Harry Potter, but I'll still defend people's rights to play this game without getting harassed. And 3 million views on this tweet. I cannot tell you the amount of promotion it took to get this many likes and views on a stream promotion tweet. You couldn't pay money. There is not enough money you could pay to get this kind of free promotion for your stream. Like, the boycott people, once again, the Twitter freaks, boosted this so hard by complaining about it and once again making an us versus them narrative, which makes people against the harassment want to support people like this and posts like this even more, to the point where this will easily be her most successful stream announcement post she'll ever make. And from the stream itself, apparently she was topping out at about 6,000 active viewers, which is apparently the highest she's ever had. It was a recipe for success, and it was really the Twitter freaks that spun all of this stuff into motion, and it wouldn't have happened without them. And of course, she is being attacked left and right, but I think anyone trying to cancel Pippa with these types of things are in for a rude awakening, and I don't think she's going to have any issue and is going to brush this off or even laugh at it as a response, because... It's, it's she's dealt with this before it's nothing surprising but i wanted to share this one last tweet i thought it was a very interesting point it is something being raised over and over again everyone's claiming peak me was never harassed peak me was always graduating peak me uh, the harassment had nothing to do with the graduation i think this is a good point these are real things that happened and things that i've covered over the last couple of weeks actually the producer of velma is secretly right wing this is all a stunt to make us look bad that happened. There was an actual very widespread and supported belief that Velma was so bad that it was intentional that the producer, Mindy, she intentionally made it so bad that people would hate the left wing and secretly Mindy's actually right wing. And that's why it's all a psyop by the, the right wing to make the left wing look bad is if that's a sane thought to have. And then actually most of, of the people doxing Silverbell's family are secretly right wing. This is all a stunt to make us look bad. Again, that happened too. The entire Silverbell drama, harassment, and doxing was framed on transphobes who were trying to set up trans people and also anyone on Twitter who was trying to call people transphobic over Hogwarts Legacy. And now the most recent one, actually, Pikami planned on getting bullied. Yes, there's people who are saying that she announced this stream on purpose, the Hogwarts Legacy stream, just so she could get harassed and play the victim and have everyone feel sorry for her and give her attention like that. That is the kind of gaslighting that I've come to expect out of Twitter users, and it is really disgusting to see the uh, supposed good people gaslighting people who are victims of harassment into believing that they either deserved it or it never happened or that they planned for it to happen and they're actually manipulating everyone by being harassed. And speaking of gaslighting campaigns, what would any event be without Kotaku leaving their dookie stain all over it with another stinker article that is made for rage bait clicks and just like any other Kotaku article, I have my ad block on so they don't even get the fraction of the penny they would get from the ads playing on their page as I scroll through to laugh at them. So just like all the other gaslighters on Twitter, here's just a few quotes I want from this article. They say, Peek and me originally planned to stream Hogwarts Legacy when it launched on February 10th upon reportedly receiving criticism for plans to broadcast such a controversial game, she canceled her stream. Yes, it was not harassment, guys. It was just criticism. That's right. Despite the mountain of evidence showing that she was harassed, it was simply criticism for playing such a controversial game. How dare she play such a controversial game? And this is the last part I want to look at for this stinker article. 
Many people within and beyond the larger gaming community have voiced concerns about promoting Hogwarts Legacy, as it will in turn monetarily support Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling that's not even been proven to be true. She was already paid and more copies sold only helps the people who worked on it, by the way. Who has repeatedly expressed anti-trans sentiments, a Reddit thread suggests that the negative comments on Pikami's announcement of her legacy stream included threats to unsub or express personal disappointment. Kotaku also viewed videos from other VTubers showing the negative responses to Pikami, which included commenters reportedly trying to explain their reasons for such the suggested boycott or questioning her commitment as an ally to transgender people. Other streamers have faced similar criticism. Yeah, so, again, she's she just being criticized. It's all it is, guys. She's just being criticized. Look, Kotaku writing a terrible article and blaming a victim of harassment, hardly surprising, but of course, it is worth looking at. So, once again, we can be reminded of how garbage of a journalism site this is. So I want to end this video on a more positive note and really just give you guys an idea of what you should be doing moving forward. Now, I will not try to silence any of you for going out there and fighting the good fight and fighting bullies on Twitter and denouncing misinformation surrounding the situation and defending people like Pikami or being unfairly attacked for simply wanting to stream the Hogwarts Legacy game or anything related to it. But I will also say, as I said in the previous video, do not resort to transphobia. Beside just being wrong, you are also feeding into the narrative many of these cry bullies are trying to push, and it distracts from the actual victims in this situation, like Pikami, who should be properly defended. And if you don't believe me, just think what Pikami would want. Would Pikami want transphobic comments? I don't think so. So if you have respect for her, I think you can follow through on that. But... I will say, going forward, it, you know, you can feel sad, you can feel angry about the situation, but also, don't forget, she still has a full month of content to make, so she just got done with her latest stream, her return stream, and it was great, good time, good vibes, and honestly, that's what you guys should be doing forward. If you're a fan of Peak Me, go join her final streams under this persona, and try to have the best way of ending, the happiest way to end her career as Pikami, instead of focusing on all of the negative stuff, go to her streams, have a good time, and that's the best way to end the situation, to give her a proper graduation. So thank you for listening to all that. I know it was a long video, but I appreciate all of the time you spent listening, not just on this video, but the, re the many recent Hogwarts Legacy related videos. It's been a lot of drama and controversy, so I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to listen to that. So as usual, let me know all your thoughts about this whole situation in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone, and I'll see you next time.